Hello everyone, this is Melody Bell, founder and CEO of Financial Beginnings, and we've got another great webinar that we are going to be uh, hosting today. And so please share this information, subscribe to Financial Beginnings YouTube channel. Uh, essentially what we're doing today is, is pulling an excerpt from our SAFE program for college students and our Financial Foundations program for high school students, and specifically talking about insurance. Um, my guests are from Country Financial. I've got Kwa Tran and Chris Schalkler. And so, you know, with that, um, Kwa, can you start just g giving us a little bit of information about Country and, and your role there? Okay, so my name is Kwa Tran. I'm the insurance agent for Country Financial, and I've been with Country for more than two and a half years. So Country starting out as, uh, you know, like an insurance company, their main focus is on farmers to insure farmers back in um, Illinois, 1929, and we grow since. So we um, been up to 17 states, and uh, we have more than um, one million households. And our goal for the next coming five years is uh, we're trying to uh, put focus on micro business and um, you know like home owners. So yeah, that's perfect. And, and Chris, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so uh, I started with Country Financial a little over five years ago, much like Qua, and uh, I had some early success and wanted to go into management. And now uh, I'm located here in uh, Portland, Oregon, and uh, my agency uh, consists of 20 reps just like Qua uh, servicing the local area. And again, uh, we do all lines of business from auto, home, uh, life insurance, and then we also do financial services, so helping people with their retirement um, planning and uh, managing 401ks and IRAs and such. Perfect. Well, welcome both. Country has been a supporter of Financial Beginnings for probably well over a decade now, and um, I, I partially blame you all for, for getting our organization national because um, you actually take our curriculum and, and reps such as yourselves go out into the classrooms in those 17 states that you operate. So um, very cool and, and very integral part in, in our expansion and our history. So when we're talking about the different types of insurance, like I said, we're only able to cover a little bit today. So we're going to be focusing on auto insurance. Um, but essentially, you know, there are several different types of insurance. And if you have the potential of a, of a loss, you can probably find an insurance to do it. I mean, I know there's some silly ones that are like, you know, cold feed insurance for, you know, if, if my uh, spouse leads me at the altar when I'm getting married or, you know, here in Portland, right, you know, chickens, there's, you know, insurance for that. But um, yep. auto, auto insurance tends to be one that we can all, you know, resonate because most of us do drive. So yep, when we're definitely. talking about insurance and, and weighing, weighing the risk of it, essentially insurance is a way for us to be able to, to manage risk. Um, and, and we kind of have to, to weigh that out on, you know, what is that likelihood that I might have a loss? What is the cost? How, how much risk am I willing to accept? And so, you know, Chris, when you're talking to people, how, how do you help them to, to figure out how to weigh that risk? Yeah, so, uh, you know, first, the things you have to think of is we're governed by uh, a state which has their own laws. And so we have to abide by those rules. And uh, with that being said, there are things that is mandatory when it comes to car insurance uh, to legally drive on the road um, and be uh, a, a driver, legal driver. You have to have insurance. Um, not everybody does, but uh, the state requires us to have insurance. And with that, uh, to not only um, it's not required that we carry uh, proper damage uh, liability, but we do have to carry liability limits for uh, in case we get an accident, we hurt somebody. But uh, whenever you're looking at insurance, I think it's very important that you really focus on what's the worst case scenario. If I get in a car uh, and I drive and I run into a tree, what is my liability? What is What would I be responsible for for the tree? What would I be responsible for replacing that car? What is it going to cost me to get fixed? So really, each person is going to be have their own um, reasons for having full coverage, which would mean if you get an accident, you pay deductible and you get your, your car fixed. Uh, not everybody requires, uh, will, will want that. Uh, some would just say, I'll go buy a new car. Uh, some can self-insure. 
uh, when it comes to the, the replacement of that vehicle because they have the funds to do so. And then there's some that some people that just don't have the finances in, in uh, that situation where they would want the insurance company then to step in and allow those dollars that they've been putting towards the insurance company to then pay to replace that vehicle. Um, so it really depends on each personal situation, but really it's important to sit down with your insurance provider and really talk about what's the worst case scenario if I were to get in an accident and, exactly. and what, how can I best cover myself? Right, exactly. And you, you talked about this. So, you know, it is, we are legally required to, to have insurance if we're going to drive a vehicle. And so, um, and you touched on that. We have to have liability insurance and, and essentially liability. It doesn't protect my car. It's, it's protecting everybody else from, from me and the damage I, I do with my car. Right. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, with that, um, you know, we talked about liability insurance with that, um, you know, Chris, can you break down what that means? Like the, the bodily injury per accident per person and, and the property damage? Yeah, you bet. So, um, you know, on every declaration page, I don't care what insurance uh, company you're with, the first thing that you'll see there is uh, what's called bodily injury liability. And that's if you or somebody driving your car with your permission is legal, legally, uh, you or somebody driving your car with your permission is legally liable for injury or death to another person. Uh, so that's the, the li bodily injury li liability portion. On the other side, you also have the property damage liability, which again, if it's you or somebody driving your car is legally responsible for the property damage. So if you run into a mailbox, if you run into somebody's vehicle, if you run into their house, I don't care, there's a, a limit there. Uh, again, the state governs what the minimum requirement is um, which, again, is very concerning to uh, uh, insurance agents like Qua and myself because the, the liability limit that the uh, state of Oregon requires is only 25000 per person, up to 50000 per occurrence, um, and 20000 property damage. So, again, when I go back and I talk about how does this affect me and what's the worst case scenario, if I were to get in an accident and I hurt somebody and I only have the state minimums, I'm then uh, legally responsible for anything above what the insurance company is not going to cover. Um, and so th those are definitely things that you need to be uh, focused on and realize, you know, um, that if you get an accident and if the worst happens and somebody gets severely hurt or injured, um, you need to have higher liability limits. And they, the really funny thing is people don't realize this, but liability is actually the cheapest uh, cheapest p component of insurance policy. So what I mean by that is if you wanted to increase from the state minimum, which is 25,000, 50,000 and increase that to, let's say 100,000 per person up to 3, 300,000 per accident, which is usually where we like to start with our clients. Uh, it, it's really only going to be a few dollars a month difference. So it's really not that big of a uh, increase in your premiums when you're looking at the long, um, you know, what that policy looks like. Uh, if you're going to add full coverage to a vehicle or lower the deductible, that's where you're really going to see a influx of, of premium dollars. Um, and again, uh, when we're talking insurance, most people are really concerned about what the premium is. Um, but really, we need to really take a bigger <laughs> scope and really look about, again, what is the worst case scenario if I get an accident, and then really look at the what the cost is going to be after that. So, um, yeah. yeah. And Kwa, can you like, give an example? Because like, I think in my mind, you know, if, like if I tell my daughter 25, 50,000 for bodily injury, she's like, that's a ton of money, right? Can you give yeah. an example of, of maybe why that's not a lot of money? Okay. So uh, the, the one of the mo most example that I use to explain for people what is 25,000 per person and 50,000 per occurrence is. Um, so let's say um, I'm just using the, um, the stats that I'm talking to people. Um, the just the normal amount of knee surgery when you get into an accident is like up to 35,000. That's not including the loss of income that you cause to that person, loss of suffering and medication, medical bills. So that's a lot of money that you know you have to pay out. And 35,000 is more than what is the state minimum require you to have, which is 25. So which means you have to be responsible for the, the you know, the $10,000. 
Um, that could be a major financial loss if someone doesn't understand the, gen uh, the uh, general liability and they just have state minimum. Well, and there's just the amount for that, that pain and discomfort that you've caused for that yeah. person's injury, which they're also entitled to. Um, one of the things too I wanted to point on, Chris, that um, I really stress to, to my, my teenager is when it comes to insurance, the insurance follows the vehicle. And the important aspect that I, I heard you say is that you, that person has to have permission to, to drive the vehicle. So, yep. you know, if somebody steals my car and they cause an accident, that's, that's not, you know, necessarily going to come into my insurance. But if my daughter lets somebody drive my car and they didn't get permission, then that's the key is somebody to tell my daughter is like, don't drive anybody's car unless you have permission from that owner, which many times is the parent. Definitely. And, and again, you know, it's, it's important to realize um, how, how it may affect you as well. And a lot of people may say, well, I'll just take the state minimums because if I get in an accident, I don't really have anything. I'm just, you know, I'm in college. I don't, I only have a few hundred dollars of things in my household. You know, they can't really go after me for much, but uh, in all reality, the, the state of Oregon, for example, um, can garnish wages uh for um, a good period of time until those wages, until that um, loan is repaid, or not loan, um, but that uh, injury or that damage to that vehicle or whatever it may be. So um, yeah, in the state of Oregon, uh, it's about 20% that they can garnish of your uh, working wages, which I don't know many people that can, can reduce their wages by 20% and uh, still maintain the lifestyle they live currently. So I would be a little bit worried if I went to an agent and they didn't have that conversation with me to talk about how the minimum is not enough. And I think actually that was the case when I first, you know, got my own car insurance was, you know, yep. went with what they told me and I had no idea. So. Yeah, it's just, it's important, you know, again, it's not something that we learn in school today, you know, and you know, until you really get to maybe college. And even if in college that, that education piece had comes and, you know, most most kids are on their uh, parents' insurance all the way up through college, and then they go get their own insurance. And a lot of times, it may be just like you know, you call in and you're just trying to, you know, you're just making, uh, getting your first paychecks, and you're just realizing what it's like to pay bills, and you're just trying to squeeze every dollar. But really, it's important to take the time to educate yourself. And uh, again, you're not going to know what questions to ask, so the one thing you can ask is tell me how this will affect me and what's the worst case scenario. And then that'll open the door to have those deeper conversations, hopefully. That's great advice. Um, so we talked about, you know, the liability is required by law. Unfortunately, not everybody does have insurance and they're, they're driving. And so, you know, we, we also have uninsured motorist coverage, which, which essentially covers us if we are um, in an accident and that's caused by somebody else that doesn't have mm -hmm. it. Um, so Chris, can you expand a little bit more on, on what uninsured motorist coverage is? Yeah, so it's actually, there's two components of it. It's uninsured motorist and, there, and then there's even underinsured motorist. Um, and so what that means is, let's say again, somebody has uh, the state minimums of insurance, right? And you get in an accident with them and they're essentially gonna pay your bills, right? But let's say, your bills are going to be hundred thousand dollars to for back and you know the follow-up chiropractic appointments and all this stuff well there's a gap of about 20 uh, seventy five thousand dollars there right they only have twenty five thousand per person so where is that other seventy five thousand going to come in this is when it's another good reason to have that higher limits of liability uh, insurance on your own um, policy because this is when it would kick in and then and and again in the state of oregon um, they actually just changed this in the last couple of years, you get the additional amount plus theirs. Uh, so you get your liability limit and you get the liability limit of that underinsured driver. So if they had 25,000, I have 100,000 per person. I now have $125,000 of liability insurance to protect me in that claim. Um, so uh, it, it varies state by state, but uh, I do know for, for Oregon, that's how um, that works. And again, that's another reason why, uh, you know, I have, I have a wife and I have two children. 
Um, a lot of the times when I'm thinking of insurance and I'm purchasing that, I'm not thinking about covering me and my kids because I don't really, you know, unless you have the knowledge that that the policy allows you to do that. Let's say you get in an accident with somebody that doesn't have insurance, which unfortunately there are people on the road that are uninsured. That my policy and that uninsured, underinsured claim will then kick in to protect, you know, my son and my daughter and myself and my wife in that accident. So I want to make sure that I have higher liability limits, not only to protect those that are on the road, but my own family as well. Yeah, and like you said, the, the required by law is actually many times the, the smaller portion of the insurance that we're having to, to pay for that of that premium. You know, where when it comes to, you know, hey, I actually want to get my car fixed. And, and so that's where, you know, having collision coverage or comprehensive coverage, which is no fault saying if I cause this, that, that my car still gets fixed. And and so it is optional, but it can be required if I'm financing that car. The the lender is going to want to make sure that that I am insured with that. Um, and so, but then there's a bunch of other optional ones. And so, well, you know, tell me more about optional coverages and kind of what you usually go over with with clients and recommend. Yeah. So the optional coverage that I usually recommend people have first of all is the erosive side system. The second is the rental car um, coverage. And the third one is the class coverage. And not a lot of people actually understand what's our special uh, endorsement, which is uh, class coverage is. We actually gonna replace uh, customer windshield and uh, headlights uh, without any uh, deductible. And it's actually, it's come out to be a very important coverage just because you know, um, for like new cars, um, they actually have new technology, they have a rain sensor, they have a camera on, on their windshield. So the cost to replace the windshield nowadays is actually really expensive, usually roughly- $450, four. I just did it last month. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, and it was so different because, you know, the last time I had replaced my windshield was probably um, uh, 10 years ago and it was an older car, I think it was like a 2004. So I didn't have the, the fancy rain sensor. Mm -hmm. And I, I was a little bit surprised when I found out how it went from $150, you know, with that older car to $450 now with that, that rain sensor aspect. And, you know, same with when you're talking about like bumpers now, we've got cameras all around our, our car where, you know, mm -hmm. your bumper cover is, you know, four or $500, but now you've got to replace that camera and all of that. The technology is just crazy. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you also brought up a, another good point, which was uh, rental car coverage. You know, uh, and a, there's a lot of misconceptions and we get this question a lot in the insurance world, you know, customers calling in um, about what, rental coverage, uh, rental car coverage actually covers. And really when you purchase that coverage, it's only in the likelihood that you get an accident and that your car is in the shop and it's your fault that you use that coverage. Uh, usually if you get an accident, somebody else's fault there, the other insurance company is going to provide you with that rental car. Right. And then the second thing that always comes up is, you know, we all go travel sometimes and you rent a car. People are always like, Oh, it's okay. I have rental car coverage, which, they do have that coverage most likely, so they don't necessarily need to have the rental car coverage, uh, but really it's two different things. When you're driving and as long as you're driving a regular everyday compact vehicle or SUV, your insurance policy will cover you on that car that you're renting. Um, however, if it's uh, a truck that's you know like a U-Haul truck, usually you would want to buy the additional insurance because again, it's a different uh, vehicle. It's a commercial kind of vehicle and uh, you'd want that added protection in that case. So, yeah. so those are things that we get a lot of those questions about the rental car coverage and what it covers and um, the, the com it's a common misconception, so. No, oh, thanks for that. Now, this is always a big one, right? What makes up that premium? And, and, and it's kind of that, that, that push-pull with that. And so, um, you know, I know that a lot of individuals right now are, you know, their budgets are hit for, from COVID for, you know, it can be, you know, loss of job or, or income. And so they're looking for ways in their budget and they're thinking, you know, hey, I'm not driving my car, you know, do I cancel my insurance? And so can you talk about just what, what's going on right now with, with COVID and, and how insurance companies are, are responding to this? Yeah, so um, right now, or my company, Country Financial, we actually offer a refund for clients that have um, 
beginning to have the insurance starting on April 1st. So we actually give a refund of 15% for April and uh, May. And, uh, you know, the check will come in, uh, mail back to our clients starting on May. So that's one of our way to help people that got hit by this COVID, this pandemic. And also uh, besides that, we're actually holding the building until June 2nd if someone is you know, having a hard time, you know, making the, uh, paying their bills. So the big thing is to, one, don't be canceling insurance right now because for all the reasons that we talked about that yeah. that create that worst case scenario. Um, but, but two, also keeping in contact. And I, and I say this, you know, not just with, you know, insurance, it's with all of those, those obligations that we have financially, um, you know, be it utilities or, you know, mortgage companies or all of that being in contact with them. Cause there are a lot of options and, and, um, ways that the companies are responding to, to be able to help you. Definitely. Yeah. And again, uh, I can speak for my agency, my company. I mean, our agents are really trying to be proactive and reach out to clients to, to understand, um, you know, what their current situation is, what's, you know, car, people are driving less right now. People are making changes. They're selling vehicles. They're, you know, maybe um, having different drivers. I mean, there's a lot of things that change all the time. And so it's really good. To, if, if somebody hasn't reached out to you, your insurance agent hasn't already, it might be good to reach out to them and just find out what opportunities there may be there for you to maybe save some additional funds if that's uh, your current situation. Um, but again, I highly recommend, regardless of if you're in you know this extreme rare case, case of the COVID or any other situation, that on an annual basis that you meet with your insurance provider and review coverages um, and review policy information and just make sure, again, you understand what that worst case scenario is, make sure there hasn't been any changes you update your contact information and you get the updated, uh, you know, updated information from that uh, insurance agent, you know, make sure you have the mobile app so you can get your ID cards off of there and that you have, you can pay your uh, payments right now electronically just through an app rather than having to go into the insurance office. So, but again, you learn these things by staying in contact and at least talking to your insurance uh, provider once, once a year. Great advice. And, I've got a young child that's that's 19 and oh wow I saw when those rates went up <laughs> and, and with her driving and so um, you know not to go into all the different factors but what do you recommend for for somebody that's in you know high school or, or college to, to be able to, to well, mitigate some of those get, you know get the best rate um, but still be properly protected yeah so I mean each company will have different uh, opportunities uh, and different groups that they want to provide services for or discounts for. Uh, at Country, for brand new drivers, if they're 16, uh, they can actually take a course through Simply Drive. Um, it's it's for our company and allows that driver to go through a quick online uh, class. Essentially, it's only 15, 20 minutes, but that's a great discount. Uh, but the biggest one when you have new drivers in the household. Uh, we'll always go back to those grades uh, and you know a country if you have a 3.0 or better you're going to start dipping into some better grades uh, and better discounts so um, and then on top of that you know when you're looking at a vehicle for that uh, child you don't go buy that brand new vehicle for their first vehicle unless you really can afford it and they're you know you feel comfortable with them um, because again, if they get in an accident, those rates will affect you for the next three years. Um, mm -hmm. and you don't want to have that following you and the, or the, those liability claims, you know, um, that could really hurt you in that aspect. So if you're able to put them on a liability only vehicle, um, that'll really save you some additional funds as well. And then again, as they transition out, um, and get into college and are on their own, the sooner the better to get them off your policy. And, uh, because, um, again, you don't want them to get an accident and that liability come back and, you know, you'd be liable for, for your, you know, 20 something year old child's accident. You know, they're adults at that point and they can be liable for their own accidents and they'll be treated differently uh, than, than the adult in a lot of cases. We just went through that. She, uh, our, yeah. our daughter did have her first accident after a couple of years and, uh, 
uh, on the liability only car. And so um, one of the things that I wish I had done was uh, more clearly put expectations to her on that, yes, I'm still going to want you to fix my car that you wrecked, even though we don't yeah. have the collision <laughs> coverage on it. And so, um, you know, she was, she was a little surprised when she had to, to pay that $800 bill to, to pop out the bumper. And um, so I would definitely recommend too, as, as a student or as a parent, if you're driving somebody else's car, you should be understanding what you're, you're responsible for in, in fixing that car if you cause damage. Definitely. Well, you know, with that, I, I really appreciate uh, your time that both of you had. Um, you know, is there any uh, last parting words that, that you have of wisdom, either just in the sense of common questions that you get or just regards to, to what's going on with the current state we're in with, with COVID? Yeah, I would just say, um, you know, it's unfortunate today that, you know, our society, I mean, you turn on the radio, you turn on the TV, anytime you hear insurance, the first thing you think about uh, is price. And although we all want to save money, um, that's not really what's important. You know, it's great to save a buck here or there, but really you want to make sure that you understand, uh, again, what's that worst case scenario? If I get an accident, how is this going to affect me? Is my car going to be replaced? If, my, if I get a flat tire driving to school or work, how am I going to get that resolved? How am I going to get that fixed? If I have a claim, who am I going to have to talk to? Do I have a 1-800 number? Do I have a rep? like PA, where you can actually go into the office and talk to them and are they gonna fight for you? So again, really try to get the understanding of, of first what's legally required and then second, what are the options that, uh, that are available to me and what's the worst case scenario uh, gonna be in, in that claim situation? So um, you just really wanna know how it may affect you um, so that when claim time comes, you're not upset at that insurance agent and uh, that's, that's sometimes the case because, again, um, there wasn't that education piece. So, uh -huh. How about you, Paul? Yeah. So just a side note. Um, so this is, uh, you know, the more I work in this insurance industry, the more I realize that my job here is just trying to educate people and I try to make people understand that without insurance, you know, like the world could not work. Like people cannot build stuff, people cannot drive car because they're so afraid of if, you know, they got hit by someone or they hit someone, you know, they have to be the one to paying out the, the damage. So yeah, it's uh, my job here, it's just trying to educate people. And I think that's a perfect approach, you know, and, and like you said, you don't want people to, to find out in that hard situation, um, you know, having that reflecting back, wishing they had known. And so taking that um, that approach of, of educating individuals, which, you know, is definitely what, what financial beginnings that we are striving to, to do is um, hopefully, you know, giving that information before they make the mistakes that, that so many of us did. So, well, Thank you, Kwa. Thanks, Chris. I, I really appreciate your time having this discussion. Um, please remember to subscribe to Financial Beginnings YouTube channel, share this information. We're going to be launching the, the future lineup for this very soon. Um, and so thank you. Stay safe and, and healthy.